Hello everyone, in this video we want to look at the interactive viewer widget and this widget allows you basically if you have for example an image that you have automatically this pinch and zoom gesture integrated and you can also drag your image around and you can modify a lot of it and you can change a lot of properties so let's just get started and put this into our interactive viewer so now this image is wrapped in this interactive viewer and then we can hot restart this application. And now you see that we can immediately zoom here into our image and zoom more and less. And this is automatically supported. So we don't need to write that much. We only need to wrap our widget, which we want to zoom into this interactive viewer. Then we have also these properties here, for example, max scale. So we can set here, for example, 1.1. And if I hot restart now, then you see, okay, we can maximal scale 10% of the image size. So it's not really much. Maybe we change it to 1.5. And then if you hot restart, it's a little bit more. So you can change it here and you can even go like really crazy with four and then hot restart. And now you can zoom here really much inside. We also have the other opposite direction, so we can zoom outside. But first of all, we need to set this boundary margin. And we set it into all directions with this edge incest of double infinity. And now we can set here our min scale. And we set it, for example, to 50%. And now if we hot restart our application, then we can zoom here also outside, like you can see, and 50% of the size of this image. So if we have the min scale enabled, then we can also zoom outside. And the other thing is that you can move your image here around, and this is because we have this boundary margin enabled, and we have set it here to double infinity, so basically you can drag it around everywhere. But you also can put it here to less value, for example, 20. And now if you hot restart your application, then you see you cannot drag it anymore that far because you have here this boundary and this is our limit. So we cannot drag this image far around. You also have this property scale enabled. And with this one, you can enable the zoom feature if you want. So for example, if you press on a button, then you enable it for a short time for the user not to zoom this image. And otherwise you have this mode inside. And now if I try to zoom here in and outside, it doesn't work because we have set it here to false. I will put it again inside. It's just a property which we also can set. Then we also can set this property constraint to false. And if we now hot reload, then you see, okay, we have here this image, the whole view right now. And you can basically drag your image here whole around. And now we have here also this white padding. If you don't like it anymore, you simply get rid of this boundary margin. So let's hot restart it. And now you see, okay, we can drag our image here around and we can also zoom here inside further. So we can go here inside and drag here around. So this is enabled with this constraint folds. And it's basically if you have big widgets and you want to give your user the choice to actually drag around in the image, then he can do this with the constraint to folds black. I will set this again outside so that we have this normal view. And we also have here more properties. So we have here this on interaction start. So every time if we press on this screen, then we get a notification here, for example, let's say start interaction. And we also have the same things for end interaction. So here is the other one with end and then the interaction ends and we can then hot restart the application and look into it. So if I try now my interaction feature, this interaction starts and if I if I'm finished and don't press anymore the screen, then the interaction ends. And here inside of this callback, you can then react to the fact that the user interacted with your widget or that he, the interaction ended. And you also have this on interaction update. And this is giving you much more power. So every time you get the scale update details and here are different properties inside. So you get the scale, the horizontal scale and the rotation and everything what you need to determine the state of the current scale. So I have hot restarted this application. And now if I doing this update interaction all the time, so if you go here into the console, you have here this 
update interaction a lot and somewhere in the beginning you have this start interaction and at the end you have this end interaction. So this is about these three properties and the last one I want to show you is this transformation controller. And here inside we set a controller and now we have much more control over our interactive viewer. So we go here to our state level and create this controller and we initialize it with transformation controller and then we have our controller set up. And what we can do with it, we can for example listen to our controller. So we have here this init state and then I simply listen to our controller. So I add here this add listener. And what I can do here inside, I can, for example, look at the controller values. So let's check if the controller value get max scale is greater than 1.3. And then we can do here something. So scale greater 1.3. And I will comment these here quickly outside because they put so much into the console. And now we can test it. So basically we have a max scale of four enabled. So we can have here a scale greater than 1.3. And now if I hot restart, then we can zoom here inside. And then you see that we have here the scale greater than 1.3. And I can even change it to let's say three. So we get these notifications much later. I clear the console. And if I now hot restart, then you see that we get this notification much, much, much later. So here we enabled this 3.0 scale and then you can interact and do here something. We also can reset the scale and how we do this is, for example, we create here a button in our app bar and here we create this icon button to reset our view and therefore I set here this to restore. And here inside I call this method reset. So I need to implement this method. And what we are doing here inside, we get our controller. So this is our controller, which we have put here into our interactive viewer. And there we have this value property and we can set it again to the default value. So we set it here to matrix for identity. This is the default value. And then make sure that you also wrap it around in a set state so that the UI get refreshed. And now we can simply hot restart this application again. And I zoom here inside. And now if I press here on this button at the top, then you see it will restore the default view again. And we also can have here an animation. So let's say we don't want to have this abrupt change. We want to have like an animation. And therefore I command this here outside. And now we set here a new animation controller. And we can simply take this controller reset and initialize it in our init method. So here at the beginning, I create a new animation controller and here we need to supply some values. So let's create them. First of all, we sync and I set it to this. So I have to set here also this ticket provider state mixin. And now we have to set here the duration property and I set the duration, for example, to milliseconds 700. So this is how long this animation will last later. And now we have to use this controller. So basically what we want to do is we want to go to our reset function. And here we create an animation, which is called animation reset. And therefore we have here this matrix for trim. And the animation will begin at the current value of our zoom. So I set here the current value, which we get from our controller. And it should end at this default view. And this basically means that we are, for example, at a specific zoom. So this is our controller.value. And it should then go again to the default view, which is this one here. And now we have to say, okay, please do the animation for us. And therefore we set here the controller.reset. So this is the controller we have set here at the top and which we have initialized. So this controller basically takes 700 millisecond for the animation and it will take care that this animation is done. And now we also need to update our animation. So I take this animation reset and add here this listener. And inside of this listener, I set the controller value to this new animation reset value. So this animation is providing us with a value each time. And then we set our current scale, which we have 
in this interactive viewer to this new value. And now we have only to do two things more. So we have to call here this reset controller and reset it. And then we also have to call the forward and this makes sure that our animation gets played. And this makes sure that we reset the animation every time. So let's hot restart and let's look how it looks in action. So now I zoom here inside and now if I press here on this button, then you see the animation is going outside again. And we can also have it directly here, for example, if the interaction ends. So if the user is not interacting with this image anymore, then we can also play this animation. So basically I will just call this reset method and then he will care about that this animation is playing. So let's try this also out. I hot restart the application and now I just start my interaction. And if I now release my fingers, then he is going back and doing this great animation. And now we can every time zoom here inside and then he will automatically zoom outside again. So I've also set it here to reset state that it is making sure that every time the UI gets refreshed. So this is basically about the interactive viewer. So we have a lot of properties which we can set and we can also have a much deeper control about our interactive viewer with the controller. And then we can access the value property and also other properties. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!